Man, Uncharted 4 on the PlayStation 4 sure is fun. I wish there was another game kind of like it that wasn't exclusive to a Microsoft console that had, you know, a female main character. Whoa. 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 Nice. Hey guys, Anthony here and welcome to Quick Shock. So today I want to talk a bit about Tomb Raider or Rise of the Tomb Raider, the sequel to Tomb Raider, which came out I think in 2013 and relaunched the Tomb Raider franchise. And I thought it was a pretty good game. I even got the PS4 one right there, the definitive edition or whatever. And they're fun. My favorite games are the Uncharted series. And now some people will say, you know, Uncharted ripped off Tomb Raider and then Tomb Raider is now ripping off Uncharted again. Whatever. I enjoy a good action, run around, shoot. Oh, fuck. No one told me that was real. No one told me that was a real loaded gun. Anyways, they're just fun action games that I enjoy. And so I was looking forward to the next Tomb Raider game. I thought the first one was pretty good, but it had places to improve. And I was looking forward to the sequel. The sequel, they're taking a few years to, you know, develop. So it wasn't a rushed, like, get it out there next year kind of product. So I was excited to play it on my PlayStation 4 where I played the other one. And it was an exclusive to the Xbox. They announced it at E3, like this game was going to be exclusive. But there was like hints of the game being a timed exclusive kind of deal at, you know, E3. But it wasn't confirmed. Now it's confirmed. Tomb Tomb Raider is going to be exclusive for one year on the Xbox brand consoles, and then it'll be coming to PlayStation later on in 2016, where the game is coming out now in the 2015 holiday season. Kind of sucks, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about exclusivity in games and what, what console exclusives mean to me. Now, console exclusives used to be a big, big deal because in the days of like the Genesis, the Master System, the NES, the Genesis versus Super Nintendo, when you had a game called, you know, what's an example? Aladdin. The Genesis Aladdin was much different from the Super Super Nintendo, most of the time developed by two different teams, and they were completely different experiences. And at that point, you know, it made sense to argue which one's better. It wasn't just nitpicking, like this one has a slightly better frame rate. This one has better, you know, resolution, that kind of stuff. But since, I, I would say, the N64 era, around there between the PlayStation and the N64, it's pretty much been the same. Things that come to mind are like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 on the PlayStation. You know, there was a lot more songs and the visuals looked a bit better. And on the N64, the, the songs had to be cut down because of limitations. But after that, console exclusives started to die out because, you know, third-party games wanted their game on every console. So it was like, let's put Tony Hawk on everything and they'll all be the same game and whatever. So nowadays, people say like console exclusives don't matter anymore, but I don't agree with that. One of the main reasons I bought a PlayStation was so I could play with the Battlefield Friends guys and play with them. But another reason was I was really looking forward to playing the Uncharted games and all the exclusive games that were on the PlayStation that I had never got to because I was on the Xbox 360 most of the seventh console generation. So when I got to the PlayStation, I loved it. I loved the Uncharted games. I loved all that stuff. And they kind of sold me on my next gen console, PS4. I wanted to make sure I got that because I wanted to play Uncharted. So console exclusives do still apply to me. While you can compare hardware every day of the week, like, oh, this one has a better resolution, this one has a better this, whatever, it comes down a lot of the times to either who you play with, your friends, and the games, and the exclusive games. Xbox has, what, Forza, Gears of War, Halo, I'm sure there's a couple other small things. PlayStation has, you know, Infamous, Killzone, um, Uncharted, obviously. They had Bloodborne recently, which is awesome. Personally, I think the PlayStation 4 has a stronger exclusive, or Sony has a stronger exclusive library, but that's just what I'm into. Some people might really love Forza and that's for them. But my point is that they still apply. The console exclusive is not dead to me. And so does it make sense for Microsoft to buy Tomb Raider, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider for a year of exclusivity? Kinda, but not really. Here's my thing with exclusives. If you're gonna do an exclusive, go all out get that game on your console forever. Now, Microsoft's been fucking this up a bit. They had Rise, Son of Rome, when the, when the Xbox One first came out, and a couple other games that uh, later on came out on the PC and completely diminished your reason of getting the Xbox console to play these games. They got rid of the exclusivity, which makes no sense to me. Same with Tomb Raider. Since I can wait a year, I'm no, I, don't, I doubt anyone's gonna go out and buy an Xbox just for Tomb Raider for a year. If it was forever, I could see that. And, and maybe not for Tomb Raider, but there might be a fan, a really big fan of Tomb Raider who really wants it. I love those action adventure games. So I'm not saying I would, but maybe it'd be like a thing I'd consider. But if I know I just have to wait a year, I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't care. It's just a year. It's not a big deal. I think they've wasted their money getting an exclusive deal with Rise of the Tomb Raider for just a year because you can get it on the PlayStation 4 and later on. So who cares? Who fucking cares? That's my thing. Please guys, I mean, if you guys care, please leave a comment below and let me know if you care about an, a one year exclusivity. This also brings up the idea of like Call of Duty. For the longest time, they had the map pack exclusivity where, where a month ahead of time, you'd get the map pack for Call of Duty on the Xbox. And just recently, Sony has that now. I guess they've bought it from, from Microsoft or whatever, and now they get the thing for a month. I don't think that matters at all. I don't think it matters one bit, especially a month. If it was a year, maybe, but who would do that for map packs? Cause the next Call of Duty's out. You know, 
those sa those same deals never mattered to me. Oh, I'll, a month ahead of time, I can get a couple of maps. That's not a big deal. Again, I'm happy to hear that Rise of the Tomb Raider is coming to the PlayStation 4 because I'm looking forward to playing it on that console. I want to play Uncharted 4 on there and then some Tomb Raider and compare them and play them and just have a good time. But I think the exclusive thing was kind of stupid on Microsoft's part, especially if it was just for a year. But that's just what I think, guys. And I thought it would be fun to talk about console exclusives. Do they matter anymore? But please, let me know what you think. Please leave a comment below. Let me know if you think console exclusives matter, how long they have to be to matter. Do you believe a year is enough time? Do you think exclusivity should go all the way? Please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys next time. Who the fuck had the real gun on set?